Well, welcome back. All right, so this is going to be the end of the first turn and the beginning. Well, I'll probably play through a bunch of turns because at the beginning of the game, you you don't have much to do, so your turns go by really fast. Uh, later on in the game, they slow down a lot. Before we get started on this turn, I'm going to go ahead and explain different types of uh, biomes that you can find on the maps. Like right here, there are mountains. Mountains are unpassable by land units. It's just something that you can't do. Uh, I know if you've played other games like Skyrim, or oops, if you play other games like Skyrim, you like to go over the mountains because it seems so much easier than I don't know going around them. But you have to go around them in this game. Right here is forests. Forests can be cleared just like jungles. I don't see any jungles on the map yet, uh, but they can be cleared for production points. This is tundra. There's plains over here. This right here is hills. Hills provide a better field of view. Like I'm a line of sight for this character because he's on a flat ground, it is pretty much one space next to him. Uh, he can see over here and right there as well, but he can't see all the way over here. If he's on the mountains, he can see further. Or on the hills, I apologize. If he's on the hills, this right here is snow. Obviously, it's covered with snow. And it also has the river feature. You can see at the bottom right corner over here. It'll show you an explanation. So this is forest on tundra, and this is snow and river. More tundra, and there's more. Uh, there's others in the game. Uh, this happens to have a wheat resource. You can see it at, over there on the right. It says wheat, and that just, uh, just adds plus one food. See how this tundra only has one food? The little green thing is food, and the little hammer and the yellow thing is production. So this only gives out one food. Wheat equals two. Marble gives out money, which is, or gold, which is two, and production points, which is two. And deer, there's all these different types of resources, so deer gives out two food. But it requires the trapping technology, which can be researched right here. Okay, so I'm going to go over at the top, right, top left. I'm sorry, top left. This is your science points per turn. Obviously plus four, and that's affected by buildings and resources that you pick up. So plus three resources right there, and we're getting a plus one from the population. So the building gets plus three, and the population gets plus one. All right. The next is your gold per turn. It'll show you what your income is and what your expenses are. Right now we don't have any expenses. Later on, there'll be things that you have to upkeep and pay you four. But until then, all we have is this. Plus three and not losing any. This is your trade routes available. I only have one, but we're not using it yet. So you got zero out of one. This is your happiness. Happiness goes up from certain resources and buildings that you have, amongst other things like your uh, social policies. And it goes down based on how crowded your cities are, if you're at war, if you're not, different things. You'll see later on in the game what affects it. This is your account to your golden age. Um, okay, so it shows you, I mean if you mouse over these it'll tell you what it is. I'm just going over them briefly. And the golden age is affected by happiness. Now we have 11 excess happiness right now. So we're getting 11 golden age points per turn. Uh, this is your policy number. Once I get to 15 policy, I can adopt one of these fancy little social policies right? right here. And this is your great works. I haven't really gotten any great works yet since it came out, but uh, we'll, we'll learn together on that one. This is your faith. Different buildings will bring up your religious values in your cities, and it'll affect faith, and faith points can be, per can be used to purchase different great people. And we'll go over great people later as well. And then your Tactical resources, as I like to call them, will be up here. So horses, don't have any horses. Um, I, don't know, I don't know why it's showing me, because I don't have any. Maybe I see some on the map. Maybe? Nope. Maybe. I don't know. But anyways, this will show you how many are available. So if you're going to build, I don't know if I can build a horseman yet. Nope. But if I wanted to build a horseman, I would, it would require me to have one horse. Once I build a horseman, it would go back to zero because that would be zero available horse resources. This is your world map, and it only shows 
what you've discovered. So right now, my civilization only thinks this is the world. And of course, when they explore more, the map gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This is your diplomacy tab. I only know me. I haven't met any other civilizations yet, so it's not going to show me much. World Congress hasn't been founded yet. Your social policies, as I showed you before. And culture. Culture is new to civilization. Um, uh, there's a culture victory option, which I have turned off. And you're influenced by other players. Obviously, you don't know anybody yet, so there's no influence. And this shows you the different cultural buildings that goes off through the entire game. So, right now it's telling me a unit needs orders. So I can click that. It'll take me to the unit that needs orders. And I'll go ahead and set him on explore for now. Now, it's, Explorer is automated, so he'll just explore until there's nothing else to see, or he gets stuck, or he can't travel any further, um, and he'll just do that until I tell him to stop. Now, let's go to the next turn. Alright, so turn number two. It shows you which turn you're on up here, what the year is, and you can also click help, which will bring in the Civilopedia, and you can look up all the extra things that you want to know, like what the Great Firewall does, or what the Angkor Vat, Vat does. So, escape that. And then of course, this is an important menu. You always want to save your game. Because if you crash, or if your power goes out, you spend all that time running through those turns, and you end up losing it, then it's, you know, oops, don't know what to do now, gotta start over. But luckily the game does have an autosave feature, and I utilize that a lot. Let's continue to the next turn. Continue through the turns until something else happens and then I'll explain more. had our first happening if you want to call it that uh, we discovered a barbarian encampment now this is little camps where barbarians will spawn uh, right now it just has a, a brute which is the same as my warrior maybe a little bit weaker and the camp that's around it now once you kill whatever unit happens to be in there and take over the camp it'll give you a reward typically in gold so this is an active unit icon, and when a unit is out of moves, when the unit's out of moves, there we go, it goes dark. So I can't, he can no longer do anything else this turn. You can click on these to show where the happening is, or where the discovery is. So, if we're looking at our city, this pops up and we're like, oh, where's this barbarian camp? We just click that, it takes it right to us. Eventually, later on in the game, this whole side of your screen will fill up with different notifications, and you can just right-click them to get to get rid of them. This shows you a really basic this button right here. It toggles between what kind of map you see. If you enjoy playing in this type, I mean that's that's cool. I just like to see what's going on. And then this can show you different map options. Like now, you can see what everything wields. This has plus one food, plus one production, this has two plus two production, and so on and so forth. It just gets really in the way. And the resource icons you can see, oh, it's a deer, or oh, it's wheat. Mm -hmm. It also show you trade routes when you have them. I only have one city so far, so I can't show that. And recommendations will come up when you're going to build cities. They'll show you, you should build a city here. So, go ahead and turn that off. And we're going to cycle through some more turn. Well, we'll go to the next turn and I'll show you combat. Okay, so it's my turn again. I'm on turn six. Here's my active icon. The warrior can now do all kinds of stuff again. One of your combat units is near an enemy unit. Like he said, we're near an enemy unit. Now, when you hover over, when you have an, a unit selected, a combat unit selected, and you hover over an enemy unit, it brings up that page at the bottom left. And it shows you what your damage is, what your bonuses are, and if you 
will, it gives you a rough estimate of how the combat will go. So minor defeat, yeah, it's not exactly something that I want to attack with, so I may not attack, but I'm going to anyways to show you how it works. Um, this icon right here, the shield, is a fortified unit. The circle is a non-fortified unit. So if, actually, I'll fortify my unit this turn and show you. Now my unit has a shield as well. I'll go ahead and unfortify him, which you can come over here and click the wake unit button, or you can just go ahead and make him do something. So let's fight. Ah, I did more damage to them than they did to me. It was a smart attack. So now, I'm out of turns for this unit. Ugh. Out of turns for that unit. And now it shows you what their health levels are at again. And if they were to fight again, where they go next. Oh no, what's that? I'm out of moves. Won't let me attack him. So we'll go ahead and go to the next turn. Alright, turn 7. My turn again. I'm just going to go ahead and attack this guy again. We have failed. Oh, battle didn't go the way we wanted it to. We might be losing now. Let's go to the next turn. See what happens. Oh, and our unit got promoted. Now at this point we have only three options, which is heal instantly, drill level 1, shock level 1. And each promotion has its little special ability. Like heal instantly, you can you can only use it once per promotion, but it'll automatically heal your character up 50 HP points. Drill one is a permanent promotion, and it'll give them plus 15 strength in combat when you're in rough terrain, which is forest, hills, and jungle, and then shock, which is the same thing except in flat terrain. I'm gonna go ahead and heal him so I don't have to take the time. Then I'm gonna attack again. Still not victorious yet. We'll go to the next turn and see what we do. Alright. Now we can see. It's a decisive victory. Let's do it. Alright, we successfully destroyed the barbarian unit and now we get a reward. 40 gold. And now the, ca the camp is gone. And we can continue doing what we were doing before. So let's go to the next turn. Oh, we have researched our new technology. It'll tell you a little quote from somebody over the, you know, the course of our history. And then it tells you at the bottom, allows workers to construct mines and increase production of map tiles, chalk forests, allowing the construction of other improvements. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and bring these guys closer to our civilization so they can heal. And we'll go ahead and choose our next technology. Hmm. Hmm. We'll go ahead and go with economic. We'll try to be a friendly civilization, even though we are the Huns. And this is where I'll end the next this video. Join us next time, and we'll play through some more. And we'll see what we get. Thanks for watching. Bye.